Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we concentrate on high-value home theater and audio products, audiophile products, hi-fi products, and sometimes headphones. And today, we're talking about the BC Acoustic EX214. I don't want to touch it. It's an integrated amplifier. It sells for $600. So grab a cup of coffee, sit down, and let's talk about the BC Acoustic EX214. Today's sponsor is Sith Audio Pencils. They're audiophile grade pencils. They're $15 a piece, but they sound real good when you're writing notes on a piece of paper, and they also work when writing upside down. So NASA put a whole bunch of money into space pens that write upside down. I don't know if that's true or not, or if the people just use that to sell more pens. Sith Audio does it like the Soviets did it, and that's they just use pencils in outer space because guess what? A pencil can write upside down. Sith Audio, audio file grade pencils. Literally almost hit the lens. Okay, the BC Acoustic EX214 is an integrated amplifier that makes 45 watts per channel into 8 ohms, 70 watts into 4 ohms, and can even drive 2 ohm speakers. It's $600 dollars in the US 598 actually so BC Acoustics reached out to me and it was really through Thomas from Thomas and Stereo he did a review on this product and he said hey Randy you might be interested in this product and I said hey Thomas I am thank you here it is it has Bluetooth as a phono stage it has a DAC that can take an optical or a coaxial input no USB unfortunately and it's an AK 4112 DAC chip and it has a remote, fully functioning remote. You can change inputs, turn things up and turn things down. So why was I so excited about this integrated amplifier when there's so many other integrated amplifiers that cost around the same amount of money or even less? Well, one reason, the loudness button. And I love the loudness button. If you watch any of my other videos, which you may consider doing, if you're new here, maybe subscribe. I have videos about vintage gear about new gear, about home theater, about hi-fi, about speakers, DACs, amps, turntables, receivers. Anyway, I love the loudness button. I love the loudness button, and I wish the loudness button was around even more because all of my vintage receivers have a loudness button. Some of them have variable loudness dials, and that's even cooler. Loudness button, and what that really meant is meant for is when you're listening at lower levels, our hearing changes as things get louder. So a loudness button allows us to hear the music at what people would consider to be close to reference levels of sound, which can be upwards of 85 dB or 90 dB or whatever it is. Point being is you don't have to listen that loud to get the sound that you want. You can push the loudness button and guess what? Now it's a concert going on at low listening levels and it sounds great. What does it do? Boost the bass, boost the treble a little bit. There's a little magic here and there. Loudness buttons have been out of fashion in the audiophile world, as well as EQs. I don't really understand why. And tone controls, for that matter. So not only are you getting tone controls on the BC acoustic, you're getting a loudness button. And I love the loudness button. On the back, you have, or one has, a phono input. Three more analog inputs. And then you have the Bluetooth antenna, which is integrated, so you don't have to add anything. It just works. Doesn't I looked on the website, looked on their specs, couldn't find if they use any special codecs or not. You also have a preamp out, so you can connect a power amp later if you want to. So this thing can grow with you. If you want to get it now, drive your speakers, and it's very capable. Actually, can drive down to two ohm loads. So any really power hungry speakers like the Magnapan LRS, which is $600. This is $600, so now for $1,200, you can have a system that drives the Magnapans. And normally the Magnapans are pretty hungry for power. You get a phono amp, you get analog inputs, you have two digital inputs and Bluetooth, you have tone controls, and one has a loudness button, which is awesome. Actually, the way that you select each one of the inputs is kind of cool. It's one button, but depending upon which input you have, it changes color, a little ring around the edge. This is more of a traditional looking integrated amplifier, but it's got some cool futuristic touches like multicolored LEDs to indicate what type of input you're using. I found that kind of cool. How's it sound? Even without engaging the loudness button, it sounds really good. It sounds full. It sounds pretty even. It sounds not flat, but it sounds balanced. 
So it sounds very balanced, very good sounding class AB. When one clicks the loudness button, depending on what speaker you have, it can really give you a punch. And I found myself actually having to, first of all, I liked the loudness button on. Let's get that out of the way. Pretty much in all circumstances, I like the loudness button on. But when I've turned the loudness button on with certain speakers, like the ELAC Unify Reference, it was a bit much. So I had to tweak the bass down. So what's cool is you can turn the loudness on and you can control bass and treble simultaneously or one at a time and dial in a sound signature that you like personally. So you're not locked into anything. So even though it has a loudness button and even though it sounds pretty darn good out of the box, can be a bit much with some speakers, you can tweak it. Or you can turn the loudness button off and you can tweak the tone controls just like any other amp with tone controls. Point being is you have more options. And while the loudness button boosts the bass and the treble, I always feel like there's a little bit something else going on because I can never quite recreate the sound of a loudness button simply with tone controls. So this amplifier definitely is not thin on the bottom, even without the loudness button on but I like the way it sounded better. Gotta be careful with this amp with speaker pairings. This thing is actually gonna go really well with some of my lower cost recommendations, such as the Sony SSCS5, which can be a bit light on the bottom end. That gives you all the sparkle one needs on top, but on the bottom, I feel like I want a little bit more juice in the blender. Turn the loudness button on and you're off to the races. Also, Q Acoustics 3020i, great pairing. Dolly Spectre Ones, great pairing. JBL Stage A130s, great pairing. And all these speakers are really affordable. Some speakers that I probably would avoid with this would be any of the first generation ELAC. So the ELAC WB6, B5, already pretty full sounding on that speaker and takes a bit of juice to wake up the treble. In the flat mode, probably okay, but if you turn the loudness button on, it's gonna be an, an, an awful, awful mess with the loudness button on with those speakers. The cool thing about this amplifier is it's so versatile that it's going to be able to be tailored to whatever speaker you do have. Out of the box, I think this is going to pair well with a lot of the affordable offerings that may be a bit lean on the bottom. So if you like what you hear so far, consider thumbs upping the video. Apparently, I'm supposed to ask for that. I gotta ask you if you can like the video, if you like, even if you don't like the video, like the video. And my, by me saying this, you're probably more likely to not like the video. Anyway, I'm supposed to say that. I've been watching what you're supposed to do on YouTube to be better, better at YouTube. Does it working? I don't know, but I'm supposed to ask you to like the video beaten a dead horse at this point. So Bluetooth works flawlessly, connected very seamlessly. I wish there were some codecs here that I knew about, but it doesn't really matter because it sounded pretty good. With the DAC in here and the Bluetooth in here, it can seem maybe not as detailed as something like the IOTA VX. Just twist that little treble knob just a little bit to the right and it livens, livens itself up right away. The way that they integrated the DAC and the Bluetooth is good. I mean, it's, this isn't going to knock you out of your chair awesome with the concert-like experience or whatever because it's, well, it's $600. The way that the DAC is implemented, the way that the Bluetooth is implemented is very good. But again, the takeaway here is this amplifier is versatile and it is not thin. So that is a good thing because I'd rather have an amp be overly full than overly thin because I don't know. It just seems like you can add more detail in much more easily than you can add more body in. When you try to thicken up an amp on the bottom, it just kind of can be, you, I can make a real mess of things real quick trying to add a bit of thickness into my amplifier. Soundstage, pretty much in line with other amplifiers, maybe a bit better than like the Denon PMA 600NE. It's got a very good, nice size power supply, overly specced power supply. That's why I can handle it down to two ohms. It actually reminds, like this is a thinner, homelier, le okay, let me put it this way. This is a less fat, homelier version of the Denon PMA 600NE. Is that what you say, less fat? This amplifier is a non-fat, 
this amplifier is similar to a thinner, homelier Denon PMA 600NE. I just think the Denon PMA 600NE is kind of cool looking. It's got some roundness to it. It's that's a good looking amp, the Denon PMA 600NE and 800NE. Good looking amp. However, a little bit too full on the bottom for the Denon. Where this one, not as fat as the Denon, but still sounds great and probably has better sound stage. So this thing, better than the Denon PMA 600NE. To my ear, some people love that fuller sound and that's great. PMA 600 NE is going to give you all of that. This is a bit thinner, but not thin at all. What I'm saying is the Denon is probably overtly full. This, this review is really going off the rails today. The BC Acoustic, okay? Some people think it's probably made in the same place that makes IOTA VX. And if it is, great, because guess what? This doesn't sound anything like the IOTA VX. The IOTA VX to me sounded very overly detailed. I didn't particularly care for that integrated amplifier. It's great. I know people love it and that's great. I'm glad IOTA VX exists because it's very detailed. I just didn't feel like it had as much body as I wanted. This is kind of the exact opposite of the IOTA VX. A lot more body. Yeah, I got the loudness button and if you need more detail, just tweak the treble knob. I like this amp, but there's a lot of competition from the likes of Denon, Denon PMA 600NE, and even the 800NE, which is a more powerful version of the 600NE, it's more powerful. Both of them are gonna cost what this costs or less. You have the Emotiva TA1, which has a USB input, has more output options, and is $50 less. You have the IOTA VX, which is 400 pounds. I don't know what that translates to US dollars. It, very affordable. People love that amp, and there's a good reason why. It's very detailed, a lot of soundstage, a lot of good stuff going on. One also has the NAD C338, which I have in-house. That's $700, so it's more expensive, but it also has some streaming capabilities. While the BC Acoustic EX214 is good, and it's kind of a jack of all trades, but it's kind of a master of none. If it does have a standout quality, that is going to be in its fullness and its bass presence. But even that, with the loudness button on, can be too much of a good thing, and I found myself having to dial back the bass when I engaged the loudness button. So with the EX214, it is, it's a safe bet. It's a safe bet. There's a ton of options. There's a ton of different ways you can tailor the sound to your taste, but there's a ton of competition out there. This falls kind of right in the middle. And there's other options out there from Onkyo and Pioneer and Marantz. I don't know exactly what they cost. Middle of the road, but the one standout thing that this has that other people don't or other products don't is the loudness button, a little bit more versatile. The DAC, you're only getting 90, uh, 2496. So if you want bit perfect, high res music from your computer, it's not gonna happen. If it's over 96 kilohertz for the sample rate, it's very good. It's not widely available in the US. I will link a few places where you can get this. And I do have questions about the company in general because when I go to their website, Everything is discontinued except for the EX214. And it sounds like the company started out as a speaker company. I want to know more. They're going to make more stuff. I want to know about it. Let's, let's see it. Let's see your new stuff. And I know it's tough right now with supply chain and all that good stuff. But all that bad stuff, really. Great product. Very versatile. But a lot of competition in the price range. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio. Man, every Sunday night, we have patron-only Zooms. We also have a pay patron. We also have a patron, a patron-only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Amazon Music. Click the link in the description, sign up. You get three months for free, and maybe you get six months of Disney Plus for free, and I get a couple of dollars. I don't know. The one I have linked is the one that has the Disney Plus six months for free. All right. One can also use the links in my description. However, these links will not be affiliate links, but if you're so inclined, 
go grab the BC Acoustic EX214. I think it can be a very good way to start your journey into hi-fi, but there's other options out there, so do some research. Find out what you think you're gonna like the most. So don't binge watch anything, binge listen, maybe through your new BC Acoustic EX214, and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy, I'm the Cheap Audio Man.